In this video, I'll show you how to do mortise and tendons, because why not? Okay, so this video is going to be a carry-on, if you will, from the style and rail shaker door video that I've already done. And I wanted to show you how I would implement mortise and tendon joints in Fusion 360 so that whenever I go and print these blueprints at the end for free on my website, joshjamesdesign.com, in the shop section, you will be able to see the actual uh, way these are connected. Now, we'll be probably using pocket, pocket screws uh, as well, but I will mainly be using mortise and tendon as the means of connection on this door. So anyway, uh, getting right into it, I am simply going back to the original file and I am going to just essentially carve in using the cut feature everything that I need to get the uh, mortise and tendon to work on the various components. So as you can see, what I'm doing is separating out the uh, sketch here to the right of the door, and then I will just use a constraint to pull it over to the door itself, as I just did there. And the reason for that is so that if I were to convert this over to a parametric modeling uh, type door, I want these cuts uh, to carry over into each door regardless of the height or width of the door so it's important that in my opinion and the way I do it uh, it's important to get uh, the constraint set to where it will always be in place
Now, for the styles, um, it's pretty simple. For the rails, you need to do, you need to really think through what, which rail you're working with. In this case, the top rail, uh, because we only want uh, this feature, uh, the mortise and tendon to be on the sides and the bottom. So you'll see here uh, how I'm doing that. Because And if you also, if you were to copy this top rail for your second one in the middle, it's going to mess things up because that rail uh, as well will be different. Uh, the top rail here will not have anything on on its top side, it'll be simply smooth. So if you were looking down at the door, you're not going to see any kind of mortise and tendon. And on the actual bottom rail, it too is different. It's just the reverse, which means you'll have nothing on the bottom. It will be flush on the bottom rail. So you need to really be cognizant of which uh, rails you're working with so that uh, you just have it correct. And you can undersize these if you want to be really precise. I would just assume that someone that was using my particular drawings would understand that um, the mortise and tendons need to fit. So you need to make sure you undersize a little bit on your cuts. So I just didn't show an undersizing. Well, I did a little bit. You can see here 0.49, but not really more than that. So anyway. Just keep that in mind whenever you go to cut these, you need to make sure you're uh, oversizing your cuts so that you can fit in uh, mortise and tendon joints without any issue. And you don't want to overcut them so it's wobbly either. So make sure that you're paying close attention to that whenever this portion comes up. There you have it. Uh, maybe through some trial and error. In my case, I was able to get this where it needs to be so that I can just simply extrude the uh, half inch plywood out uh, in between each of the uh, styles and rails. So that's pretty much all you would need to do here. And once this is complete, I would just simply print these drawings and each one will now show, as you can see there, will show the overlap in the correct place for the plywood uh, in all of your joints. So it's just that 
easy. I consider it pretty easy to do. It's not something you necessarily have to do if you're going to give someone drawings using Fusion 360, but it's a little bit more thorough so that they can clearly see uh, where the cuts need to be made instead of just the actual material and its links that they need. Anyway, thanks for watching and many more Fusion 360 design videos for leather and woodworking on the way, as well as some tool reviews uh, as I get to them. Thank you.